Good afternoon. Uh, my name is CW5 Jared Jones. That's J A R E D J O N E S. And I am the uh, Utah National Guard Aviation Public Affairs Officer here in Utah. Uh, this morning at approximately 925 Mountain Standard Time, we had two Utah National Guard Blackhawks involved in an incident. This was at an approved mountainous LZ up here at Snowbird. Uh, upon short final to landing, uh, it was obviously a, a lot of snow or some snow last night and as they landed there was uh, the snow kicked up and uh, the aircraft probably lost sight of the ground. Uh, we can know that there was portions of the video uh, of the uh, rotor blade that separated from the, uh, the helicopter and struck the second helicopter who was also uh, on short final to land. Uh, fortunately the second aircraft landed quickly. Um, the uh, incident itself happened uh, just outside of a uh, snowbird proper. Uh, it was on the U.S. Forest Service land. Fortunately, um, none of the crew were hurt. Um, there was uh, little to no, well, no major injuries, uh, possible minor injuries, we're not sure. Uh, to our knowledge, no fuel was leaked. Um, the aircraft are contained. We have uh, personnel on site there with the aircraft. Uh, the uh, crew was able to, on their own accord, fortunately, uh, get down to uh, or take basically the tram back down and get checked out here by the uh, medical folks at, at Snowbird. Um, I just saw some of the crew myself recently, and it was a blessing that everyone was okay, uh, which for me is the good news side of the story. Um, I'll leave the uh, initial story at that and pending any questions. When you talked about what, I mean, they were... They were flying around. Can you describe, I guess, a little more about what exactly they were doing in the training exercise that maybe took them so low to that area? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Utah National Guard does a lot of mountainous training, both in the summer and the winter time. It's a, it's a normal practice for us. This is an LZ we've been to before on many times. It's a, an approved uh, a landing zone, if you will. Um, and they were conducting uh, winter mountain training at the time of the incident. Did you say that the rotor from one hit the second and that's when the rotor, that's when one rotor fell off or did the rotor fall off first and it hit the second stop? So I wasn't there, but I have seen some video and my understanding is is that as the first aircraft landed, you do see a lot of snow kick up, a lot of snow. And then thereafter, portions of the blade of the lead helicopter separated and it appears struck the second helicopter that was about to land. When you say the blades uh, separated, we're talking about the rotor blades. The main rotor blades, correct. But the top, the top blade. Yeah, because right. within the area there were there were skiers around. I mean, they got video and such. So were the choppers in approved area? They weren't too close to places they shouldn't have been. I mean, certainly when the rotor flies off, could have hit somebody. Yeah. So uh, it was an approved LZ we've been to before. Uh, it's a, it's a large LZ that's fairly level. And when they survey LZs, they do factor in you know the civilian factor. Uh, I haven't seen that specific LZ myself, but I, I believe they were far enough away to be no immediate risk to you know, any skiers, basically. So. Beforehand, did they have a uh, like a flight plan? Did they know that there was you know snow the last couple of nights? Was this something they could have expected? Uh, absolutely, S uh, snow at this time of the year is, is very common and usually celebrated. <laughs> uh, the crew trains to landing in, in snowy conditions, even if it's ice, uh, recently snowed or snowed, or even snowing actively. Uh, so it's a, it's a normal thing that our unit trains to and teaches. How far is the property off of Snowbird? Like it's not at the resort, right? It's not at Snowbird. I believe it's about 150 yards off of Snowbird proper on U.S. Forest Service land. How many people were in each chopper? Uh, I don't know the exact number. Um, I wasn't part of the uh, approving uh, process. Uh, but a standard crew is usually at least three or four per, per Blackhawk. So there was at least three or four? Is that okay? To I think that's a fair assumption. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Then the second helicopter was coming in for landing when it got hit, or was it, it can you explain that? Or? Yeah, so uh, to the best of my knowledge, again, I, I wasn't there. This is just from some video I've seen. As the first helicopter lands, uh, an incredible amount of snow kicks up. And in the as the snow is kind of kicking around, you can see portions of the blade coming away from the lead helicopter. And then uh, one of those pieces appears to have struck the second helicopter, which caused it to land uh, shortly thereafter. 
Are the Blackhawks still usable? Uh, I cannot speculate on that. I know we have uh, our own folks up on the mountain. Maybe uh, maintenance test pilots are there assessing the damage, and we'll have to kind of take things one at a time. Yeah, next steps, I mean, are there efforts to come retrieve them in some way? Can you describe what that would look like? Yeah, the, you know, we'll take steps to get it off the mountain as quickly and safely as we can. Uh, as part of an ongoing uh, in investigation, we'll have to see what happened first and then remove the parts and pieces, um, hopefully in a, in a you know, short time frame. If not today, sometime soon is the, is the, the goal. What made the pieces of the rover fall off at all? Was it just the amount of snow, just the heavy amount of, of backwash, or what happened? Uh, that I don't know, and our unit is going to be conducting a uh, safety uh, accident investigation to determine that and find out more about why that happened. But that was the one that landed already? Correct. Okay. I know you said that there was no fuel spill. Are there any other injuries uh, <coughs> for the watershed, like fluids or any of the metals in the helicopter? I mean, the, the helicopters have uh, a lot of pieces and parts and fluids to keep it running. It's not unlikely that some of the hydraulic fluid may have leaked out. I mean, the main rotor system uses hydraulics. Um, but uh, but no fuel, so. So no, no, no negligence cited at this time? No, I mean, it, it just happened this morning, so we're gonna be doing an active investigation and find out more, but uh, it was routine training and clearly very snowy. Was Ski Patrol, were they helping you guys with the crew getting off board and clearing them off the mountain? Uh, I believe they got there very quickly. I, I can't speak to that with certainty, but I, I think they were there very quickly and, and were a big part of the process of getting them off the mountain safely. So kudos to them for that. When a Blackhawk um, is, you know, having this accident happen, what does the um, pilot call over on the radio to get help, or when this happened, what's what's the signal to get help? Typically, it would be a, a mayday call over a common frequency. Of course, in this mountainous terrain, your radio can only go so far. So I, I assume they would have made one, but uh, it's hard to know who might have heard it. So fortunately, uh, it was it was near a place where people were able to respond quickly and, and get there within uh, probably a matter of minutes. I'm not entirely sure. How often do you do these trainings? And you mentioned you do them often, but I mean, are you doing this once a day, once a week, once a month? Uh, and, and we don't see this happen very often, so I assume an incident like this is, is quite rare. It's quite rare. So for uh, both the Black Hawk and Apache Helicopter Battalion here in, in West Jordan, uh, we train this as part of our routine mission set. So both uh, summertime and wintertime mountainous training, including dust and snow conditions, including uh, you know, very, we call it, you know, full whiteout condition. In, in combat, there are places you have to land sometimes that are that that difficult, and so we do train to that standard. That weekly, how often does that training take place? Um, it depends on the individual and the crew and the mission, but I, I would say that as a collective whole, that training's happening weekly throughout our, our organization. Do you know anything about the crew at this point, whether they were um, young men and women, older, experienced, any of that stuff yet? Uh, it was a, a mixed crew. Uh, there was... Uh, men and at least one woman present. Um, I know that both the pilot and commands were very senior and, and, uh, and experienced. Um, I know for sure one had deployed a few times as an aviator um, and uh, a well-trained crew, so. In talking with eyewitnesses, uh, did they feel like people were close enough that they, they could have been injured on the ground, either from the, the flying rotors uh, or, or the, the aircraft themselves? Could you talk about where they were going to land and also just the, the, the uh, that no people on the ground were hurt? So uh, I don't know the name of the LZ, but we have a, a nomenclature for all of our approved landing zones. And, and again, this is one we've been to many a time. They are surveyed to make sure that they are large enough, uh, factoring in you know margins for error. Um, and I would assume that this one was selected knowing that it was far enough away from civilian populace that it was of, of minimal risk. But could you say that for sure, that this particular one is? Um, I haven't been to this particular LZ myself, so I'm not going to state that with certainty. So we've got time for one more question. Can I just ask one, and then you have time after you have sure. a question. When you say the lead helicopter, that was the landing helicopter. So that is correct. Clarify that. Absolutely. So the, uh, and, and we often use terms like chalk one, chalk two. Chalk one is a lead aircraft landing to the approved landing zone. Uh, as they are coming down to land, you can see in some of the video uh, a lot of snow kicking up off the ground. And then uh, after that whiteout continued, that's when you see portions of the lead helicopter, their main rotor blade, separating and then hitting the second helicopter. What's the learning lesson from all of this? Sorry, Chalk 2. Chalk 2 is the one that lost the blade, not Chalk 1. Chalk 2 had the uh, tow rotor 
it appears to be the other way around. So that's part okay. of the investigation. Well, well, we'll find out. Yeah. I, again, I wasn't there, and I've only seen videos, and it's as you can tell, it's very snowy up there. So I, d I don't want to speculate any further. That was uh, just in my your position, uh, just the learning lesson for everyone involved in the National Guard. Uh, yeah, this is a, uh, aviation is an inherently dangerous business, and we train to a high standard. Uh, obviously, things do happen from time to time. Um, you know, we do train on that on that edge so that we're ready for a combat environment anywhere in the world, and the, and the crew assume some level of risk. Every time you go fly a helicopter, there's a little bit of danger involved. Uh, I'm just happy that everyone was okay, and, and it, yeah, so it could have been a lot worse, and I think the crew, with what happened, did some um, quick, deliberate thinking to get everything else down safely, shut the helicopters down, and all walk away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.